Hello, this is the Chart Profit webcast. Approaching three and a half hours into the trading day on Friday, the 11th of September. First of all, here we're looking at the pre open today. This is the E mini SP. I'm talking about the major resistance level up here at 1978.50, which is this line here. Wednesday this week, we opened above that level and that price probe above that resistance immediately rejected. We sold off down to our first level support at 1933, which is the minor point of control uh, over recent weeks. That's here, and we've so far held that level. So currently the E-mini printing between these two levels. I think breakout above here would indicate something important. We'd see that on other charts as well that we'll look at. Until all that happens, um, I am of the mind that a retest of the recent lows despite the sentiment is still a possibility especially if we see time printed below here. So the big support on the E-mini we're looking here at the daily chart September is this level here 1870. It's big time support level we've been watching for a while. Here's the halfway point. We probed above it a couple of times but the time up here would put it in a strong price location and you can see the consolidation below that level here. Okay, so in the ebook, as you know, we've been watching important levels of resistance, and at the start of the week, we mark these once again in the ebook. First of all, here's the S&P, the spider. Uh, 187.80 is the time support down here, this line here. As you know, that enormous down day in August probe below it, but we quickly sprang back above it. The resistance that we're interested in is this halfway point up here, and again, we've seen a couple of pros, but no time above it yet which would be a positive as I mentioned. Okay, this is the Russell 2000 ETF IWM and these levels that we've had marked for a while um, are of real importance, particularly this one, 116 dead is the major point of control and that has resisted the chart twice. So time above this level would be a significant positive. Currently we're failing at that level as you can see. This level here, 111.50 is the second most important time level on the chart. And apart from that probe there, uh, it's supported here. So break out one way or the other, obviously, until we see these charts move into stronger price location up here, um, above the identified resistance, uh, there is always a possibility of a retest. So I'm being cautious until we see this sort of price action. If we look at the um, equivalent levels here on the Russell 2000 futures, similar picture. Uh, 1171 is the major here and again that was resistance and on the diamonds just quickly here the halfway point off the high comes in here and again want to see time up there now the sentiment is getting extremely bearish which um, as I mentioned last week suggests that a low is either in or usually close to being printed. Um, what we're looking at here, but I, then again, I've talked about a retest. So what we're looking at here is uh, the S&P back to 2007, the high in 2007. Red line representing often important high like this and this, uh, a 12% correction. The reason I've done that is that's where we are at the moment on the S&P. And if we just look back to 2007, very small sample size. We've just got a couple here, two or three here. But you can see um, here's the first fall from there below um, the 12% corrective level. So this point here we had a bit of a correction and then a retest over here arrowed. Okay, then coming up off the low, um, we hit a new high here for at least 12 months. And then we saw the correction down to here, more than 12%, a rally again here, and then the retest, which actually produced a powerful rally. And the same thing here. That's where we're at at the moment. There's lots of examples like this, and there are a few that do not retest. You know, you'll just see a V bottom. Usually, you have some consolidation with a rally and then a retest. Let's quickly look at the breadth charts, and then we'll look at the sentiment. This is New York through yesterday. These two indicators are still below the levels that I consider supportive. Therefore, on the pulse chart, and this is still red. That's the breadth, New York daily breadth in the middle here. And as I mentioned before, it's not really been positive since back over here, which was May. Price momentum as well, the trend down because we're below zero. We're just picking up a little bit in momentum, um, but this is not a healthy pulse for this chart. And NASDAQ, pretty similar. 
So let's move on to some of the um, sentiment indicators. This is my version of the Rydex assets ratio, the ratio between assets in the bullish funds and the bearish funds. That ratio has fallen pretty quickly down to the level seen roughly two years ago, back here, October 2013. The ratio has been lower, for instance, here. But this certainly um, indicates rapidly increasing bearish sentiment. You can see here bull fund assets are now down here amongst the uh, cumulative bull funds uh, that I follow. The lowest since uh, about July 2013 over here. Uh, in the public poll from AAII, the bulls percent actually this week was higher, 34.6, but the bears percent was also higher at 35 percent, gives us very slightly now more um, bears than bulls. Had a few weeks like that here, the red lines. Uh, the yellow line here is the four week moving average of that net figure, that's the bulls minus the bears, and that's slowly coming back, not as low as it was over here. Investors Intelligence, this um, poll is getting a lot of attention and that's because the net, the bulls minus the bears, just dip below zero. Um, so in this poll, newsletter writers, um, there are now more bears than bulls for the first time since October 2011. And I put the four-week moving average of net on there and that's 6.8. That's also the lowest since October 2011, back over here. You can see back in the sell-off in 2011, the four-week moving average of net actually itself dipped below zero. Has not done that yet. The exposure index, that's the measurement of current equity exposure of active money managers. That was slightly higher at 26.04, but the previous week, 23.85, that was the lowest reading since October. But again, not as low as October. So I'll just reiterate, pretty excessive um, bearishness here, but all the numbers so far, we have seen them lower here, here. But this one, Lipper US Fund Flows, they reported equity fund, including ETF outflows, outflows of 16.2 billion in the week to the 9th of September. That's the largest single week outflow since December 2014. So in December, this one here was lower, but this is pretty low. But I also keep here in yellow the four week flow, and that's currently down here at 30 or a negative 30.38 billion, and that's the lowest since February 2008. So let's have a look at February 2008, it's over here, and this was lower. It came in at a very similar position off the high in 2007, we had that decline. Down to here on the rally, we had a really uh, some really low numbers, took the four week flow right down to here, uh, and then we rallied and turned over, and there's that retest again. So sentiment is low enough, let's put it like that, um, that this may have been a really important low, uh, but I need some evidence. Time above here would be a big positive, as I mentioned. Till we see that, uh, a retest of these lows is still a possibility. Okay, quick look at bonds. This is the T bond. Uh, ETF TLT just a quick review from this high to this low the halfway point comes in here um, this was a spike above that level immediately rejected so in the longer term to become a real bull here you'd need to see time up here below that level looking back six months we have this time support resistance at 122.50 and we're printing time below that level which is a bit of a negative and suggests a retest of the major down at 117.14 down here and just note that the price oscillator or the momentum is below zero and heading down. In the minor time frame, the halfway point from this low to this high is this dotted line here. Just currently, we're printing below that level as well. There's a major week next week, big Fed week, and this could be nerves ahead of that date, which I think is next Thursday. But we say here that uh, we saw the probes here below that major time support and the recovery back um, but time down here in the real long term um, would indicate severe weakness longer term. Gold, I'm starting to find myself a little less convinced about more downside. Um, just to review from this low to this high uh, after the sell-off, we saw the halfway point, that's a weak pattern as you know, we then sold off to a new low 
and now from that low to this high uh, the really minor halfway point here I think if we can recover back above there that would be a little show of strength I'm thinking of this chart in light of the dollar index which we'll have a look at in a minute this is DBC the commodity ETF still looks really weak um, here's the 18 month point of control up here and we saw this and the consolidation pattern that broke down if we see a test of this low down to 14 or just below that would be a really interesting level just a quick look at oil, this is the oil fund ETF trying to rally here let's just look back at GLD, the gold ETF uh, if you remember from the ebook a couple of weeks ago this level down here uh, not on this chart but both on the continuation futures chart for gold and cash gold the July low represents a really major level on those charts um, price below the July low on all these charts as I mentioned would be uh, an indication of real weakness a very quick rejected test would be okay but this is major major support down here this is one of the reasons I'm thinking about the possibility of a low here and so we look at the dollar index from this high, really important high back in March to this low and we have this halfway point and we've rallied back 50% and turned over and we're now probing here 95.22 into the time support level uh, 12 month. Just to remind you this level here, this halfway point only came into play um, post this new test here down to this new low. So price now below that 12 month point of control puts the dollar index in a weaker position and we can see that next week not interested in the long side of the dollar until we see price up here above this new if we can call it that halfway point so above 96.50 currently I'm thinking we might go weaker here okay we'll look at the other side of the coin this is the Australian dollar against the US dollar uh, this is a weekly chart. We'll just we'll go through this um, these levels here on the daily chart in a second. Uh, if we saw the weekly turn back up here, you would have a confirmed divergence here on the weekly, which is often seen at major lows. So price to a new low, price oscillator to a higher low. We saw it over here before we saw this bounce here. But this level down here um, is target if I'm looking at long-term distributions this is a really interesting place to find low for this chart I know it's still an extremely weak price location below this really major point of control there was the big support level and when that broke we said we see another leg down which we've now done but we have sort of hit uh, targets so um, possibility here for a turn weakening in the US dollar here's the euro FX chart uh, the big level to watch here, obviously the major is right up here at 123, but the most important um, time support resistance we have is at 113.40 in here. We are probing this currently. We did spike above it and then come back below it. Um, this level here is a major half range, so uh, possibility of a rally here. If we can print some time, not just a spike up and down, but just some time above that um, time support resistance level. And if we just look at the more uh, recent price action from this uh, really extreme low in March to this spiked high here, the halfway point comes in here and it came into play post this as I mentioned uh, previously on another chart and we've now found support. So we've had uh, a rally and then half range support. So if we see confirmation above here, this would look pretty good for this chart. So possibility of strength in the euro weakness in the dollar again price oscillator is holding above the zero line here and possibility it could turn back up British pound chart uh, a little more difficult lots of really important resistance above here so not totally convinced um, that there will be a lot of strength here just because of this whole area of resistance on the chart but from this important low in April to this high, the halfway point has been probed here and rejected. So that's a small positive. Another positive would be to see the price oscillator momentum back above zero up here. There was very little change in terms of time support uh, resistance levels on most of the charts. But here on the British pound, this level here, uh, I noted that in 
just in this part here a couple of weeks ago it became a more important level this is now a 15 year point of control up here it was kind of put in through this price action and although the major is up here big positive for the chart would be price back up above here look at here at the dollar yen uh, the dollar still in strong price location here above its 12 month uh, which is here but from this high to this low the halfway point here we're actually printing below that so price down here again would give it's a little bit more evidence that maybe there's a turn in the dollar at this point. None of these charts conclusive. I just see the possibility of this uh, happening. Uh, and then again, possibility that gold might uh, find some legs. And should there be strength for uh, the dollar index? Are there any implications for the equity market? Um, what I have here is an hourly chart. It's not completely up to date a few weeks ago, but from the start of July, it's an hourly chart. Uh, the E-mini S&P in red and the dollar index in black. And in my very basic non-mathematical way of viewing things, these look to be pretty correlated right now. Okay, that concludes. Once again, I wish you a good weekend and thank you for watching.